Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Pointless Top 10, a show where we make top 10 lists out of pointless things. Why are we flying by this pointless statue in Booty Bay? Because inside pointless things are treasure. Let's begin. 10. Number 10 is the art at the Dark Moon Fair. And the Art Moon Fair, real, wait, the Art Moon, <laughs> the Art Moon Fair, the art at the Dark Moon Fair is uh, really cool. Like it has some old Renaissance style wall paintings. It's got the big King Kong gorilla man who's like eating a unicorn. Uh, it's got the actual Dark Moon Fair poster, which is pretty high definition quality, to be honest. They just put it on a tree for some reason as well. There's like, <laughs> put it on that tree. But I, I mean, if you really like the sun and the moon there, you can really see it. It's just really unique. Like it's not something you see anywhere else in the game, which I think is really cool. And obviously you can only go to the Dark Moon Fair, you know, a week out of the month, right? So. There's only so many times you can go to the Dark Moon Fair and really appreciate everything here. Uh, there's the art seller or vendor. I don't remember what they are, but they got a bunch of art in the background, like really high quality paintings. Like there's the undead hand rocking out over there. Uh, there's this guy getting blasted out of a cannon. Like there really is some cool, unique art at the Dark Moon Fair. And it was just cool going around and appreciating a lot of the art that you just glance over when you're trying to, you know, get your tickets or prizes or do whatever you're doing here and get out. And that's why art is number 10. Nine. Number nine is the Dark Moon Fair roller coaster, which actually has more lore than I thought it would, to be honest. Uh, the Dark Moon Fair roller coaster is designed by these goblins that are arguing with each other about how it's going backwards. They're like, it's supposed to go the other way. And he's like, you kidding me? Oh my God, no, it's going the right way. And then she's like, no, nah, I think it should go the other way. And he's like, no, there's no way. This is the, this is the way it goes. And then she's like, hey, maybe you should get Penny to help. And then he's like, Penny gave up on the family business forever ago. She's not going to do anything. Uh, there's also a, I guess, beta tester of the roller coaster right there. You can see, uh, didn't have a good time. Just, <laughs> they never really cleaned up after that. Uh, they also got a little hideout back here where apparently they've just been, I don't know if they're drinking or whatever they're doing. There's a bunch of empty bottles, but somebody's back here doing something. Also, this is called the Grivern roller coaster because you can either ride on the Griffin or the Wyvern. So, you know, you got options and you get the Wii buff if you complete a ride, which is the rep and experience buff. So I am glad that they added the roller coaster to the Dark Moon Fair, and I'm glad they added that little bit of uh, goblin lore as well. So that's why the roller coaster is number nine. Eight. Number eight is the Dark Moon Rabbit, and the Dark Moon Rabbit is a boss rabbit at the Dark Moon Island Cave on Dark Moon Island. And according to Wowpedia, it originally dropped one Dark Moon Rabbit per raid, but after Warlords of Draenor was released due to too many ninja loot raid leaders, combined with the rabbit's long spawn timer during a limited event, the loot rule was changed to personal loot only. If a player cannot loot the corpse, then that person did not have the pet drop for them. And the Dark Moon Rabbit is also a reference to the Killer Rabbit in Monty Python and the Holy Grail. And as you can probably tell, the rabbit was not up when the Dark Moon Fair was uh, currently going on, and I did not see it, but there you go. Through the power of technology, I am able to show you the rabbit. There it is, truly. I mean, you probably didn't even know uh, this was not in-game footage. That's crazy. So overall, it's just a fun reference, a fun limited time raid boss, and that's why the Dark Moon Rabbit is number eight. Seven. Number seven is the Cavern of Lament, and the Cavern of Lament is beneath the sunken ship off the eastern shore of the Dark Moon Island, and there are several Aaron S there. I think that's how you say it. I have no idea, but they are fell blood elves, and when you kill one of these fell blood elves, they drop a ring of broken promises. You can also see there's some crazy contraption over there. And the ring says, This item begins a quest. Deep gash marks indicate that whatever once wore this ring tried in vain to remove it. And the description says, A heavily scratched ring faintly stained with blood. Someone at the Dark Moon Fair might be able to provide more information about this item. So you take it to Chester, who is this creepy looking man in a top hat. And apparently he might be a reference to a Dark Souls character named Marvelous Chester. But either way, you give him the ring and he says, ah, I see you found my lovelies. Beautiful, aren't they? It's a shame that the process drives them so insane. The ring is yours to keep, of course. Can you hear them whisper? Marvelous. So yeah, that shit's messed up. <laughs> and that's why it's number seven. Six. Number six is kind of a combination between the shipwrecks and the Dark Moon Island itself. So if you look around the Dark Moon Island, there's a bunch of shipwrecks, which leads you to think, why are all these shipwrecks happening, <laughs> right? Uh, it's it's a lot of shipwrecks. The, once they get to the Dark Moon Island, it's just like bloop, and then they, they crash and nobody ends up getting here. It's a little freaky. Uh, but when you read into the Dark Moon Island, 
and how it came about, because the Dark Moon Fair used to just be a thing that traveled around and showed up every once in a while, right? And then they got their own island in patch 4.3. So if you read the patch notes, it says, Out with the old and in with the new. New quests, that is. Things have changed around here. We got an island all to ourselves now, and what an island it is. Miss Shrouded Dark Moon Island is a conundrum wrapped in an enigma. It's a place of mystery and wonder, and you wouldn't believe the deals we made to get it, or who we made them with. So that's a little, uh, little interesting, right? <laughs> There's also speculation of where it's actually located. Some people say they don't even think it's on the map, but when you're in the water, it says you're in the Great Sea. So I feel like you are in Azeroth. The most likely theory I read is it's below Northrend and above the Broken Isles because a lot of the fish seem like Northrend fish and then there's a Tuscar that'll show up every once in a while. So I was like, yeah, that seems plausible, but really we don't know. I, I really do love the mystery of all this and we're going to get a bit more into the mystery of all of it because it's pretty crazy. So that's why the Dark Moon Island and the shipwrecks are number six. Five. Number five is the Dark Moon Fair Petting Zoo, and the petting zoo is run by Yeb Nebelgear, and he's a gnome that says, Welcome, welcome to Yeb Nebelgear's Dark Moon Zoo Bazaar. A trove of living legends and mythical oddities. Enjoy your visit, friend. But be mindful of what you touch. These exhibits hold artifacts and beasts, both dire and divine. They might burn the wayward hand of an over-curious onlooker. There's quite a lot to see, so look, look, and perhaps one day even more will be revealed to you. Which, I don't know why he says that. That's adding more fuel to the fire of the mystery of this place, but it's got giraffes, it's got hydras, it's got lions, it's got elephants, it's got basilisks that have frozen some carny workers it's got the big king kong gorilla we saw in the art earlier it's got a whole bunch of animals but i think my favorite part of the petting zoo is this one area where people keep showing up and they're like hey are you the tour guide or like where's the tour guide like what is this and they're essentially just part of the exhibit <laughs> And it just keeps rotating who is there. There's like Gorlocks, there's an Arakoa guy, there's the Tuscar we were actually just talking about earlier. Uh, it's pretty funny and also a little messed up at the same time. <laughs> But isn't that just the entire Dark Moon Fair at this point? But either way, it's fun to walk around the petting zoo, see some references, see some goofy stuff, and that's why it's number five. Four! Number four is the latest addition to the Dark Moon Fair, which is the Warlock quest line. And you talk to Assistant Phineas, and he's like, yo, get on this carriage, we're going. And he just books it straight to the Dark Moon Fair, and you're just like, what? And before you know it, there you are, you're at the Dark Moon Fair, but it's uh, a little bit different this time around. There's not really many people here. In fact, everybody here is just a demon or some sort of warlock. Uh, there's actually this little imp guy and he's shooting off fell fireworks or his own version of fell fireworks, I guess. There's actually a guy waiting in line to use the outhouse and he's like, are you saying I'm not supposed to be here? And then he's like, all right, I got to get out of here. So he actually isn't supposed to be there and he hearts out. There's a couple of kissing booths uh, just... <laughs> <laughs> with a bunch of imps waiting to partake in the kissing booths. The carousel has also been turned into some sort of torture device where these cultists are all tied up or, you know, magically tied up essentially. But yeah, this entire quest chain is pretty crazy. It pretty much just solidifies that the Dark Moon Fair is crazy, demonic, got some old god stuff going on, and I'm not going to spoil any Dark Moon Fair quest line stuff if you haven't done it, but... You should do it if you got a warlock. It's it's wild. So that's why the Dark Moon Fair quest line is number four. Three. Number three is Silas Dark Moon, the little gnome that drives around in his rocket ship with his ogre bodyguard. And Silas Dark Moon has some very mysterious lore in his past, or I guess lack of lore. So there are numerous theories and kind of speculations about Silas Dark Moon. One of them is that he's very old, possibly older than 1,200 years old. A ghost who claims he met Silas when he was a child was from Strom. Strom doesn't exist, and it hasn't existed for over 1,200 years. Therefore, the child is more than 1,200 years old when he met Silas. Uh, the same person that mentions this also says that there is a missing old god. So there's rumors that Silas Dark Moon is actually the fifth old god, because there are many old god references all around here then there's also theories where he's actually a twilight cultist and a fun little fact patch 4.3 when the dark moon island was added in was the hour of twilight so that would also tie in a bit with the twilight cultist theory but 
Silas Darkmoon is either some sort of old god prophet, an old god, or just some guy that made a deal with the old gods. Like, I think it's one of those three. I, don't, I really do. There's too many weird old god dark theme references and everything around the Darkmoon Fair, but I actually don't really want to know. I don't mind if they get a little more into it and give us some more hints and clues, but I always loved that the old gods were a very mysterious thing. And I love the fact that this is also a very mysterious place. And Silas Darkmoon is mysterious in himself, right? The whole fair is mysterious. I think a lot of times lore is the most fun when things are left unsaid, right? Think of how many times you wonder about something in a show or a movie, and then you actually find out what it is and you're like, oh, I guess that's cool. Or like, I think what I thought of was better. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I would like to know more about Silas Darkmoon, but I don't want to know too much. I don't want to know his whole story, but that's why Silas Darkmoon is number three. Two. Number two are the ghosts that wander the Dark Moon Fair Island, and these probably give us some of the best insight to the Dark Moon Fair's past. The first ghost is Brendan Paulson, and this is one that we mentioned earlier about the kid that Silas Darkmoon met at Strom pretty much 1,200 years ago. And he talks about running away from home. His father tried to kill him. He hates his family. And so he goes to the Dark Moon Fair and sadly he dies. But the theories are Rona Green Teeth killed a lot of these ghosts. So Thera was looking for firewood when she saw something in the bushes and then blacked out. So that could have been Rona Green Teeth. Then we have Zazla, who is a troll that talks about surviving the shipwreck. So apparently, you know, the shipwrecks we mentioned earlier, this guy was one of the people that was on one of those ships and uh, he potentially got killed by Rona Green Teeth as well. Then we have Arlen Sherhoof, who talks about watching over the camp and not leaving the camp over and over again. And then we had Cup Coin Care, who is a goblin that talks about having a bunch of debt, and then he repays it by working at the fair, but after getting tired of working at the fair and attempting to leave, he dies. Rona Green Teeth actually doesn't sell any goblin meats, so it's possible he just died to the wildlife or something like starvation. And I mean, overall here, it's just, it's really weird. Like, <laughs> there's a, there's a cannibal killing a bunch of people out here in the wilderness. There's like crazy uh, werewolves and stuff out in the wild. Like, there's some, there's some weird shit in the forest, man. And so these ghosts are actually a really interesting part of the Dark Moon Fair lore that you can only see when you're dead. So that's why the ghosts are number two. One. And number one is probably the most prominent part of the Dark Moon Fair, the eye. That's right, the eye that is constantly browsing and looming over the Dark Moon Fair from various parts of the fair, uh, whether it's signs or balloons or artwork or whatever it might be. And out of all the clues, the eye is the one that really makes people believe that this is an old god fair. But the biggest mystery for a lot of people was which of the old gods was it, right? We had Cthulhu and Nazoth as some likely options, but it appears that Yasharaj is that old god. He's actually the one whose heart is restored by Garrosh Hellscream and then transported to Orgrimmar's Underhold. And when Yasharaj died, its last terrible breath manifested as the seven prime Shah, which was anger, hatred, violence, fear, doubt, despair, and pride. So one of the theories that I talked about earlier was that the eye is made up of pure emotions, with this one being nothing else than the Shah of Happiness. And even though this isn't canon Warcraft lore, in the comics, Silas Darkmoon is shown as an always smiling figure, feeling joy even when he buries a man alive without feeling any remorse. But we do have this official Blizzard Hearthstone art that shows Yasharaj controlling what looks to be a fair. I would say out of all the lore that isn't canon, Hearthstone's probably going to be pretty close to what Blizzard's intending for. So no matter what it is, I think the eye is easily one of the most notorious parts of the Dark Moon Fair. And it's the thing that everybody notices when they go to the Dark Moon Fair. And that's why the eye is number one. Hey everybody, thanks for watching this episode of Pointless Top 10. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, if you want to check out all the Pointless Top 10s for some reason, I'll put the actual playlist up there so you can see if you missed any. Or if you just want to pick one and watch it, here's Pointless NPCs. Go check that one out. Okay? Okay. See you.